Hey everybody, Andy here, helping you build a career you love. Today we're gonna to talk about how to thrive in 2022. If you are here with me live, get in the chat, say hi, let me know where you're from, let me know what you do, what you need. Put some question marks in front of your questions. If you're in one of my programs, tell me with a hashtag. And while you're here, make sure to subscribe. Do it right now, don't forget, because I hate it when you miss my new videos every week, plus live office hours Thursdays like this. So, whether you're here with me live or watching on the recording, great to have you. We're gonna talk about some things that I think we need to be committed to, three things in particular for 2022. And I wanted to have this talk, it's January when we're doing this live. Maybe you're watching this sometime throughout the year on the recording, but never, never has there been more opportunity for you to do the things that you love, for you to set big goals and accomplish, accomplish, accomplish them. There's never been more tools available to you, more opportunities, more coaches like me to tell you how to do it. But it's one of those psych kind of things, right? The opportunity is there. And I believe what I just said, that there's never been more opportunity, but I also believe that it's never been more difficult never been more difficult to actually accomplish what you want. Why? Because we live in a distracted world. You are constantly being bombarded by things that don't truly matter to you, and you have not disciplined yourself, most people that is, to block those out, to avoid them, to get dialed directed and never let anything in that's gonna set them off their path. So I'm gonna to talk to you today about, about that. And every year, I kinda of have a theme for the year. I have a theme for the quarter, I have a theme for the month, I have a theme for the week, and I have a theme for my day. I'm not gonna take you through all that, but I wanna, I wanna give you a little peek into my world and how I think about making sure that I'm accomplishing my goals and what I actually do to stay committed to them. And then I'm gonna teach you some different ways to look at, at these commitments to give, you, to give you a better chance of being successful and what am I what am I what am I talking about here? The three things I'm gonna come right out with them because the the the, the beauty isn't in the three things I'm gonna tell you. The beauty is in the your ability to actually execute them. But I believe you need to be committed to your goals, like your big honking goals. I think you need to be committed to your learning and I think you need to be committed to your discipline. And those all work together in order to help you achieve your goals, accomplish your dreams, and do what it is that you want. So I wanna break this down for you, what I do. Now, when I talked about, you know, each, each kind of month has a theme, well, it's January, so I've been spending a lot of time talking to you about your goals, and I helped you with some skill building stuff a week or two ago, I helped you with goal setting stuff, I shared my my Ironman triathlon journey with you a week or two ago and actually earlier in the year as well. So so this month is about that. And and next month is gonna be about something else and the following month will be about you know something else. March will be about about addressing your stress levels and, and your production because it tends to be a burnout month for people. That's what I'm talking about when I have a theme for you, but I think we need to have these themes for ourselves. So I want to I want to talk about that and 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 with with your goals I think the the one thing that's really difficult with goals is that we don't dream big enough. We I I've told you this before. I believe that you know I I laugh because when 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 I coach people and and we talk about their routines and their daily routines and their to-do lists and things that I hate and all, all that stuff. And I look and I say your to-do list for today is is so long. You think you can accomplish all these things in a day, but over the course of your lifetime, you don't believe you can start your own business, write that book, do whatever it might be on TV, shoot a pilot, whatever it is. So, so I want to talk to you today about how, how I drill things in to make that happen. And I want, to, I want to start with the goals, just a minute here, just to get a set. But I do believe you need to be committed to your goals. And a big part of being committed to your goals is identifying to you what truly matters and never, ever let that be at the mercy of something that doesn't. And, and I'm gonna tell you some stories today about how these little intrusions happen in my life, and I'm sure there's an analogy for yours, but deciding what truly matters. So for me, there's only a few things that really matter. There's my, my family and my, my really, really core relationships. There's my, my health, but everything that I do that feeds that health. So I, I mentioned the, the, the triathlons that I do. 
that feeds my health, or my diet, or things of that nature, meditation, mind, body, and spirit. And then there's my work. You, you all are a huge part of my life, and I'm dedicated to that. Those are the only three things that matter to me. I have plenty of time every single day to focus on all of them. I do, because why? Because I decided what mattered to me, and I didn't let anything be at the... <laughs> Never let any of those things be at the mercy of something that's not. And you have to do it on a macro level and a micro level. But once you decide what truly matters to you, what I don't think a lot of people do is they don't actually take the right first step, which is actually subtracting other things from their life to make sure that their goals are going to be met. They have created space and time to work on their goals because they haven't what I call simplify and and sacrifice. So you decide what you decide what uh, you decide what matters to you. You subtract out first, and then what you do is you add routines into your into your day, into your life, the way you 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 go about your day, the way you go about your life. That actually enables you. Once you've created that space, now it creates time for you to work on the things that matter to you. And I think you need to be committed. So being committed and dedicated to your goal is one thing, but you also have to take these extra steps in order to achieve them. So first thing is make sure you simplify your life around you. Maybe that's clothes. Maybe that's the house you live in. Maybe that's the people you hang out with. I don't know. Maybe it's the hobbies. I had to, I had to, I had to ditch a few of my beloved hobbies if I wanted to spend more time achieving other things. And then add the routines. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some routines. Actually, we'll break that down here in a, in, in, in a bit. And then the other thing is, you know, what are, what are the will nots? Be, be, be very clear on what you won't do. And when you think about, when you think about this, I'm talking about, you know, it, you know the, the Iron Man example that I gave you. I was I train a lot each week in order to create an extra 25 to 30 hours in my life which is what it what it actually gets dedicated to do all the routines to run to bike to swim to strength train to see the doctors to to go through the treatments to do what stretching and all the other stuff that goes along with it I had to remove things and in order in order to do that I had to sacrifice so I had to simplify my life so that I created that space so when you think about that, you want to you want to go on that diet. Simplify the things you eat. Put the routine in place to go to the grocery store on Sunday and Wednesday or Saturday and Wednesday or like us, I think we go on Saturday and Thursday or when I say we, I mean my wife. So, you know, and will nots right on the grocery list. The will not section should be you know, potato chips and the other things that I love so much. But that's what I'm talking about. That, that's just a little personal example, but, but this happens for businesses. So you all that run companies and teams and things of that nature, does your company actually have its goals in order? Has it simplified down to what are the things that matter? Does it have its values in place? If you are going to be customer service oriented and that is your number one goal, when you start looking at projects that you're undertaking as a company, do you go back to the boundaries you set and the vision you put forward and the routines that you should be putting in place to control what doesn't slip through. Why are we working on that project? It doesn't align to who we are. It doesn't align to what our goals are. And we do this in our personal lives. And, and, and maybe you are aligned, but here again, you're going to be dealing with distractions and people that are going to want to take that away. So think about that. Think about just think about being dedicated. This is what it's going to take. If, if you can decide what matters to you, never let it be at the mercy of something that isn't. Subtract out, simplify and sacrifice, remove stuff, and then add the right routines in. You do not do these in the reverse order. It does not work. It has to go in this sequence. And then, and then as a bonus, make sure you're being conscious of the things that you will not do. You will not eat. You will not go to that bar or you will not go to that place or you will not hang out with that person or whatever it is. But this is what it's going to take. If you want more on this, I've given you an entire goal setting masterclass. It's six modules that I give away free if you are in my leadership program or you can or you can buy it outright if you want. If you want to watch some of the free stuff, check some of my goal setting videos on, on the YouTube channel and check out that Iron Man case study. But get committed to this. You're going to need to be directed. If you want to achieve your heights, you're going to have to be able to have those routines dialed in. All right, I want to talk about learning.
Because uh, learning's a funny, it's a funny thing. Show of hands here. Show of hands, actually, whoever's here with me in the chat, and I, I know I will, I will gloriously say hi to all of you because I dove right in because I try to keep these topics tight and we'll have a healthy Q&A. But, show of hands. How many of you think you're lifelong learners? Right? Can, can just go, go right in the chat. Tell me. I hear that a lot. Andy, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a life, lifelong learner. And I, when I ask people, well, how, how, how do you learn? What do you do? And they say, well, I've read a lot of books, watch a lot of videos and all that good stuff. And to that, I would say, you know, well, that's fine, right? Being a lifelong learner is you're fine, right? Kendra, Hero Brian, Ann is in the, in the house, pumpy. You got a lot of boot campers here. But wait, and this is not to poo-poo anything or anybody. But now I want you to be dead honest with yourself, okay? This might sting a little what I'm going to say. All you guys coming in, Jeff, Grace, John, LaShawn, oh my God, you guys are awesome. Geraldine, great to see you. Thanks for staying up late. Okay, now, those 50 books you read last year, what'd you do with that knowledge? Have you applied it? Are you better for it? Do you just know what it is? Right, all those nonfiction books you read, all those video, how-to videos you watched, what happened as a result of what you learned? So learning is fine, yes, that's step one. And you know what? Applying what you learn is step two, and that's a bit better. But learning and applying what you learn for the benefit of others is the ultimate. This is what helps. This is what helps the world. This is what makes the world a better place. I want you to think about this. All those books you read, could you have essentially, all those nonfiction books, could you just been re reading a novel? If, is it entertainment? That's okay too. I don't, not, nothing wrong with that. I'm talking about achieving your goals here today. All right? So, so yes, but what did you do with that? Yes, some of you did. Some of you read and applied it. I get that. But I'm asking you, just think about that. Just because you're reading the marketing book doesn't mean you're doing something with the marketing knowledge. And this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk here for a few minutes about how I want you to think so that you go from here to here damn quickly. Okay, so I don't want you to just learn. I don't want you to just apply what you're learning. I want you to apply what you're learning for the benefit of others or the benefit of your team or the benefit of your company or something bigger than you. Okay, all right. So when I think about, when I think about, you know, how I learn, I, I, I call these the ABCs, ABCs and Ds of Andy's learning. I think in terms, this is how I think about learning. All right. These four things. There's the specifics of what I need to learn. There is the underlying skill sets that enable me to do the specifics. What do you often hear me call these? These are like the hard skills. These are like the capabilities. You might hear me call them that or abilities. Tools, tools that actually enable my ability to do this, okay? I sell products. I sell training products and coaching services. YouTube is a tool, right? I have to learn YouTube. Okay, kind of thing. And then there's the vehicles that I use to learn. All right, so what are we talking about here? Think about these four things because this is the fastest route to the application of what you're learning. All right, so I think about specifics. I have to learn how to build a training product, which means I have to learn how to set up a teaching course. Well, if I wanted to learn, what would I need to know and how, what are the steps and I need, I'm going to have to convince them that I need them to do it this way because they're not going to believe me or they're, I'm going to have to retrofit all the bad advice they're getting. And so I, have to, and I have to know how to do all that. Okay, so there's products and tools that I have to learn, but there's really like the coursework, the framework, and so on. That's what I'm talking about specifics. I have to sell stuff, right? That's, a, that's, a, that's a something I have to learn. Okay, now, the underlying skill sets. So what would that be in my analogy? Well, I have to know how to market. Marketing principles. Well, how do people buy stuff? Well, you have to show them how their lives are going to be transformed. Okay, how do I do that? Well, I could talk it to them. I could take my shirt off and flex if I'm selling, you know, health services and, you know, in the gym trainer services, something like that, be a billboard, right? Or what is it that I, I have? Well, marketing is, is also building a relationship with them, like copywriting skills, and the, I have to learn how to write and those kind of things. These are skill sets, right? Let's think about that. 
Then there's the tool. Well, I have the email system that Kara knows how to use and you don't want me anywhere near, but it's a tool, right? I gotta learn that. And then how do I learn? Well, the vehicles might be what? Training courses I could take, videos I could watch, books I could read, right? Going back to that analogy. Uh, could be any, any number of things. Could be friends that I talk to, could be coaches and mentors and people like that. So when you think in these terms, that helps you break down and group the way you need to learn things. Now, I gave you, if you were here with me on January 13th, and if you were my premium member on the 14th too, a whole skill building pyramid in my leadership program of how I think through the growth of me long term being dedicated to that, sequencing the right skill sets to become a visionary, to go from being a producer to a better communicator, to an influencer, right? To being able to direct and manage teams and people all the way up to being a visionary. And there's a way to go about this. And how to get there the fastest is thinking in these terms, this is step one, okay? To know your inventory. But then people get confused and they say, well, I wanna read this new book that came out. Well, every, every day new, book, new, new books come out, but just because a favorite author of mine has a book that's being released on a given day doesn't mean I'm gonna go and I'm gonna buy it. Why? For the same reason that as an executive recruiter, when I would help a client find somebody that they were looking for, a chief marketing officer, a head of sales, a technologist or whatever, and I would get all these emails from people that were sending me their resume who were out of work or hated their job and said, hey, I got your name and I hear you're a great executive recruiter and I'm wondering if we could take some time to talk to each other. And I would say, nothing. Because I'm being directed by my clients and their needs. And then the people would say, well, don't you need to fill your database up with people so that when a client comes to you and they want somebody, then you have people ready. That happens naturally when I sequence what I do based on my priorities, which are dictated by my client's priorities, not your priorities, right? So what, what, what's my analogy saying? So when I think about learning, it's the same way I, look, I thought about building my network as an executive recruiter. I think in terms of my theme for the year, my theme for the quarter, my theme for the month, my theme for the week, my theme for the day. And then I think in terms of week, what will help me, what will help me this week? And I'm talking about my business in this case. What will transform my business long term? Okay, this week, what will help me? My marketing skills. Why? Because I got a sale going on. Deadlines tomorrow, right? What will transform my business long term? More marketing skills more automation skills so that people could watch my stuff while I'm sleeping, right? That's what I mean. And then what will make me feel better, right? This is a, this is a contributor because I, I need to be engaged. So what I do is I think about if, so I don't, look, learning happens in the wake of what I need, okay? It doesn't happen because I'm a lifelong learner. So when I look at my month, and now we're talking February, so I don't know when you're watching this, but it's January now, but I'm thinking February, actually I'm thinking March too. And I'm looking at what needs to be learned in order for me to change what I need to change. Great example here, on early January, I needed to take training specifically designed to change something that I need to change that, isn't, that actually happens officially now, okay, in a week or something like that. So I know that my need is X weeks out, and what do I need to learn a different tool? I needed, to, I needed to investigate something. I needed to do a different technique. I actually needed to plan for time to learn it, do it, screw it up, fix it, and then watch it, okay? So to think about, do you think in those terms? Right, I gotta learn it, I gotta do it, I'm gonna screw it up, no doubt you will, or it won't, you won't attain what you want, and what do you do? Oh my God, it didn't work out. I was sold a bill of goods. No, that never happens. So that's what I'm talking about. So when you think in, in these terms, in these terms, you will learn faster. 
you will learn better and the ROI will be short and long term. Now, I'm not going to dive in into this anymore, but one thing that I will say is I think about every single week, just like every single day. Those of you that are in my productivity training uh, course, the productivity challenge, and I talk about my day is allocated to do short-term things that are due that day, mid-term things that are probably due that week or the or the next week or whatever, and then long-term things, things that I won't realize for a month or longer every single day, but every single week, the same thing is allocated to what? To the learning that I go through. There are things I need to learn that I'm gonna do right now. There are things I need to learn that I have to build right now so I can do next week. There are things that I'm planning for 2023 already that I'm doing. So, so that's what I'm talking about. And so if you wanna be a lifelong learner, go read the books. Yes, go watch the videos. Yes, go buy the training courses, hopefully mine. But I don't care, just educate yourself, but then sequence it so that you'll get a short-term hit, you'll get a long-term benefit and transformation of you or your team or your whatever it is that you wanna do. And that's the way to think about that. Be committed to it. When I say committed, this is what I mean, right? So you gotta to go to this length. Don't say I'm gonna read 50 books. That isn't, in, if your goal is to actually do something with it, what are the 50 books? When are you gonna read them? Okay, so I wanted to change something. I'm reading, you know, I read the marketing book two weeks ago. I needed to change something. Okay, so, 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 so think about that and think about, these are a few questions that I ask myself. I can't, you know, I tried to give them to you in questions that you could, you could ask yourself. All right, hey, if you're loving this so far, can I get a hey in the chat? Can I get, can you click that little likey thing and can you make sure you're subscribed? All right, I want to go on to discipline. This is, this is a fun one. So what enables you to stay on track is your proper routine, right? You might have heard me say and about a million other people, right? You might attain your goals. I said this in 2013. You might attain your goals, right? But you, you, you might rise to the level of the target, right? I want you to aim high. And even if you don't get there, that's okay. But if you, if you push yourself, but you will definitely fall to the level of your processes or your systems or your tools or whatever you dial in, right? If this is weak, this never happens up here. Okay, so you got to dial those in. Then you need incredible willpower, incredible willpower to resist the outside and anything that's going to break your system, all right, or drag you away from it. So what I what I do is I have this I have this focus that I just have worked on for many many years that I practice not just every single day but every hour every single day and then every minute in between every hour exercise that I go through. So I'm talking about being disciplined and being focused, dialing routines in, okay? And then referring back to that productivity challenge I mentioned where I outline exactly how I plan my life with the lists. I plan it by the quarters, the months, and then how I go through the week, how the week is planned and how the day is run and how I run my projects. But you've got to have some, I'm going to give you a tip here on the, on the schedule. In order for you to achieve those goals and stay disciplined and dial your learning in that's going to support your ability to do that, it has to be done in the context of time, not checkboxes, okay? Meaning, meaning, you can't just say, well, my to-do this week is to read three chapters of that book or to finish that whole book. It needs to go on the calendar somewhere. Just like every minute of every day of my life, I don't know, the book is right, oh, it's right here, I guess, right here. I can never do that, um, is, is planned. So I don't use to-do lists. I have a weekly list and I break that down by what needs to be completed that week, what needs to be completed, some progress I need to make, an, uh, uh, things I need to make progress on that week because there's a deadline the following week or the following week or the following week. And then there's other things that are maintenance things, ongoing things that I do all the time, like send you an email on Tuesday and Thursday, the coaching sessions that I have piled up one after another today, right? Those kinds of things. So I need to get them scheduled and we need to get them on the calendar. So every minute of every, of every day is scheduled in my life. And 
I'm never going to let the things that I commit to and my goals be at the mercy of something that's not. So a lot of you, what you do is you have to-do lists, which I don't recommend. A a, a to-do list, it's too easy for you to be distracted away from the to-do or not get the deliverable done. So at between 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock on my calendar today said do something and, and, and then right in that box it said that's the damn thing that needs to be completed. Okay, not make progress on unless it was a long-term thing, but it was something that was due today, okay? So that's what I'm talking about. And then you are less likely to be taken away from that. Let me give you a story. Because I, number one, the story's recent, eight days old. Number two, it encapsulates everything I'm talking about today. So I was uh, working last Wednesday. Okay, so this is eight days ago. We're on a Thursday right now. You might be watching this on a Tuesday or one of the other six days of the week. But eight days ago, uh, I was checking my email at around lunchtime. Okay, so I haven't checked the email. Well, I didn't check the email from five in the morning till what was about noon. And about an hour before that, coincidentally, this producer from a national cable news station, a legit station, that sit there right next to CNN on my Comcast cable guide, and he said, uh, hi, Andy. I gave me his name. He said, uh, I'm a producer. I'm doing a segment on, uh, I want to get your thoughts on, uh, because of this hyperinflation, uh, I want to get your thoughts on how people can negotiate a raise at work. Would you be willing to have a call with me so I could get your thoughts? And this is what they do. They want to talk to you if they don't know you. And they want to basically see what you got to say. And if you can walk and chew gum at the same time, and then we'll put you on the show. So uh, I got back to him an hour later and I said, hey, um, great to thank you. First off, it's wonderful to be asked. Thank you. I looked him up because I wanted to make sure that he was legit because I get a lot of scams. And he was. And he actually used to work for a, a news station where I actually did some morning show visits with them about job stuff. And I made reference. I said, hey, I noticed you worked over at such and such in the Weigel family and this and that. And I used to be on this show. And uh, I would be happy to talk to you and help you if I can. can. Can you please tell me how much time you need? Because I knew, I know how these guys work. They want it right away. That was it. Please tell me how much time you need and I will see what I can do. So I went about my day and I got back to my email at 7.30 that night. Okay, so he gets back to me. Uh, like, uh, I don't know, 45 minutes later and apologizes for taking so long to get back to me and says, can we hop on a call in f- in 15 minutes? But I didn't see that email. Then a half an hour after that email, he said, can we push it till four o'clock? And I'll talk to you then. What's your cell? I didn't see that email. And then 7.30 rolled around and I got his emails and I replied to him and I said, um, you know, thank you so much. I wish my schedule was that flexible Uh, I would be happy to help you if you let me know how much time you need and and I can already see how urgent this is for you. You know, my schedule books weeks out in advance. So I I can try to get something on our calendar for next week if you let me know how much time you need. If that's too far out, that's okay. And I'll, you know, see you later. And so my point to this story, and it's not done yet, but... I am dialed up based on what I committed to, what I need. And you might be thinking, well, Andy, isn't that a great opportunity? Won't you get national visibility for whatever? But we live in such a distracted world. And like to really laugh, you know, when I went on and I turned the station on and there's two people talking and at the bottom of the thing is the ticker is the news. Above that is the stock prices. And I think they might have had a third one. And I'm thinking to myself, if I went on this station, how would anybody be able to pay attention to me with all the stuff going on in their face? Right. And this is the world that we live in. But what's really funny about this story and what I'm really trying to convey to you by dialing in your big and long term goals is that he was asking me about the changes I would make to negotiating a raise because we are in a situation of hyperinflation and prices are rising. But what how disappointed would he have been when I would have said Well, actually, I have the same techniques because whether the market's going up or the market's going down or the market is flat, 
for you to maximize your raise or your new salary or whatever it might be at any moment in time has absolutely nothing to do with the circumstances. Yeah, it might be easier for you to get a raise where, where salaries are rising like they are now, but can you imagine how, how big that raise would be if you just did what I told you? And, and, and if, if, the, if the market was falling, how much better off you'd be if you used the same principles? Don't, con don't confuse changing circumstances with changing long-term environment. The environment might look a little different, and you will never be a product of your circumstances. You're always gonna be a product of your choices. You'll never be a product of your circumstances. It will always be about your tactics. You will never be a product of your circumstances as much as you are your mindset and your attitude. And you, and you might be thinking, well, isn't that a great opportunity? Well, yeah, but, but another one will come along and if one doesn't, then I'll manufacture one some way if that was important to me on my schedule, on my time, when it fits in my goals. So don't, we're, we're all so worried about trying to find the next biggest, best thing. We're all so worried about missing out. I got news for you. There'll be another TikTok. And, and, and I can't package up what I need to share with you in 15 seconds. It'll never work. You need more information. Okay, so it's more important for me to take the slow route to go bigger. So that's what I'm trying to impress upon you guys is don't get distracted by all these things that are coming around. The marketing tactics will never change. If I have to shoot a video, I still have to give you the same messages. If I write you an email, I still have to give you the same messages. The salesman that walked door to door still had to show you how much better that vacuum cleaner was, right? Or what it's going to do or how it's going to make your, your carpet look. Right, so, so stay dialed in to what, you, to what you need and don't get distracted by the outside. But in order to do that, you need to be dialed in on your days. And, and if you're not committed to your goals and you're not committed to learning to, to learn what you need to do to achieve those goals and you have not set up an infrastructure for yourself where you are so disciplined that you will, you will have unwavering focus when it comes to that, you're not going to get anywhere. It's getting harder opportunities there's lots of them they're just a lot harder to achieve these days all right so that's my theme that's what i'm going to be committed to for 2022 it's the way i operate my life but it is becoming especially important and when things change you're going to have to do more practice all right so i hope you enjoyed that